Why dentistry? Can I have a few moments just to think about the answer? Sure. So my initial interest in dentistry started when I was around eight years old. So my mother and grandmother are also dentists and I actually went to Pakistan. And obviously I wasn't thinking about what job I want to do in the future. However, I saw patients receive like examinations and fillings, something that I would take for granted in the UK. And the satisfaction I saw in their face was something that kind of shocked me. I never knew that dentistry could not only influence oral health, but also mental health as well. And I want to be involved in a profession that actually helps mental health with just as much as physical health. So this initial interest in dentistry actually increased when I underwent my own orthodontic treatment at St George's Hospital. So prior to having braces, I had a really low self-esteem and my confidence was just overall really low. And I was quite skeptical, like could brick I was quite skeptical, so like could braces actually increase my confidence that much? However, every single appointment the treatment plan was really clear to me, I knew exactly what he was doing. And I felt like this really built a trust between me and the orthodontist, and that's something that I want to translate in the future when if I hopefully become a dentist where the patient feels so at ease that if I give them advice, they'll really take it on board as they trust me. Following the completion of the treatment plan and seeing the results, I was taken aback. I was shocked at how such a small thing, in my opinion, such a small thing, something that I was skeptical about, could really improve my mental health and it boosted my self-esteem so much. I was before I was scared to smile in photos and then now you just see me beaming in every photo. And this is something in the future that I want to do. I want to make patients feel that good about themselves. And it made me want to be in a profession such as dentistry whereby you're not only improving mental health and physical health, but you're making them just feel good about themselves again and like really improve self-esteem. So as much as all the benefits of becoming a dentist, I realised that when you're choosing a profession, you have to look at the responsibilities and interests you bear as being a dentist, for example. And my mum's a dentist and I have work experience at her practice to have an insight into what these stresses are. So one of these stresses I saw was managing patients. So for example, there's my patients that come in with really high anxiety, have dental phobia, and it's the way that you adjust and the way that you speak to your patient that really matters. So when managing patients that are anxious, the key quality that you need as a dentist is communication. So by having good communication, you're making sure that the patient knows exactly what the treatment plan is. And this is an example of informed consent. Also while shadowing my mother, I realize there are a few responsibilities you carry as a dentist. A few of these responsibilities are managing infection control to a really high standard, make sure patients are satisfied. And I feel like in order to, to achieve this, you need a really good teamwork with your team in a multidisciplinary team. And as I said before, like having good communication in the team is really important as they make sure that everything's flowing really, really well and patients feel comfortable in the environment that you're creating. And I feel that personally I could live in a better dream possible whilst also managing the responsibilities you bear as a dentist. So Sibian, why become a dentist and not a doctor? Okay, so in order to both become and succeed as a doctor, you, know, you, you must be both resilient and empathetic. Doctors are a vital backbone to healthcare and their healing qualities are an asset to the community. But one of the main reasons why I chose dentistry is the rapport factor that you get with dentistry. As a dentist, you get to see your patient every six months and you get to oversee their entire treatment plan. This helps you build a rapport with the patient and also you get that satisfaction when you complete the treatment. I'm also really passionate about improving oral health. I feel like oral health is really undervalued and in the future in my dental career, I really want to promote awareness on things such as oral mouth cancer and also uh, preventive dentistry. Okay, so what qualities does a good dentist need and when and where have you demonstrated those? Okay, so one of the most important qualities you need as a dentist is really good manual dexterity. So manual dexterity is the ability to use your hands in a coordinated manner and a time where I've shown this is I, I played a flute and I still played a flute and I performed at the barbecue in my school and in order to play a flute you need really good int intricacy and also really good hand-eye coordination. And a place where you might need intricacy in dentistry for example is in endodontics where you're performing a really complex root canal treatment. And as I said playing a flute requires really good coordination and when you're working in a small area you need really good hand-eye coordination. So another key quality that I feel like you need as a dentist is leadership. So leadership is the ability to not only work in a team but lead a team. And a way that I showed this is that I was actually manager of my school's football team where I coached sessions and also managed the team during games. And in one of the games we were 3-0 down and the players were dejected. However, I thought that our team actually played pretty well to their surprise. So during the halftime team talk, I told them to play exactly the same way, just be confident in your abilities. And they, they looked at me like shocked. They were, they were confused as to why I said they were playing well even though they were 3-0 down. However, the confidence that I had in my opinions made them trust me and we actually came back 3-3. And after the game, the players 
looked, looked, looked at me with such belief and boosted the trust we already had in the team. And I feel like you can translate this to a multidisciplinary team in dentistry, for example. For example, as a dentist, when you're formulating a treatment plan, if you're confident in that treatment plan, the nurses and the dentists around you, they'll also feel confident, they'll trust you as well. And they'll make sure that you'll provide the best treatment possible and you, as you feel confident in that treatment that you're providing. So that's why I think leadership is a really important quality as a dentist. So the last quality I want to talk about is empathy. So empathy is the ability to share and understand the feelings of one another. And the way that I feel like I've demonstrated this is I actually worked as a dental nurse during my gap year and I had to provide oral health instructions to patients after the dentist had seen them. And what I realised is that some patients have um, problems that make oral health really hard to maintain. For example, they'll be smoking, they'll have really high sugar addiction. And the way that I handled it was being empathetic, make sure that I can kind of relate. Even though I hadn't experienced these problems myself, I can kind of relate to them and give them instructions that help them um, reverse the sugar addiction or, or providing them a bit of information that combats their tobacco addiction and, in, and promotes smoking cessation. And I feel like you can relate this to a dentist as, as a dentist you have to adapt to each situation and adjust your treatment plan according to the patient that you have. So all in all, I thought like that's why empathy is quite an important quality to have as a dentist. Okay, Sophia. So how do you plan to tackle the stresses of dental school? Okay. So prior to actually applying to dentistry, I spoke to a few dental students and I'm aware that there's a very heavy workload and I'm going to, need to combat this with things in place that will help me deal with the stresses of dentistry and dental school. And the way that I'm, I've had to deal with this is parallel in the way that I deal with A-levels. So for the first thing, um, I have a support system in place with my friends and family and I make sure that any stresses I have I make sure I talk to them because I feel like if I bottle them up and don't speak to anyone about it, it could affect my studies and I don't want that to happen in, de in dental school. And another thing is that I want to keep up with my extracurriculars. So for example, tennis, playing PS4, I feel like they both provide an outlet to my academic life. And having support system, support system and these extracurriculars are two things that I want to keep in place for when I hopefully start my dental career and my dental studies at dental school. Ethical scenario, so a dentist is seen not washing hands in between patients, what would you do? So the first aspect that I'd see is that they're violating GC principle one, which is put patient interest first. And this is because they're not respecting cross-infection control and they're causing cross-contamination between patients. So patients can actually contract viruses from another patient. And therefore the first thing that I would do is actually confront the dentist and tell him that you're not washing your hands and the reason why this is bad is that you're, you're causing cross-contamination. And if they're not compliant, I would be forced to go to the principal to make sure that they tell the dentist what they're doing and as they might respect the principal more than me as a dental student. And one of the reasons why I'd escalate to a principal is because they're violating one of the key pillars of medical ethics, which is non non-beneficence, which is where you're doing no harm to a patient. And clearly the dentist is doing harm to the patient by not washing their hands. So therefore, those are the actions I would take in this situation. So what did you learn during your work experience? So during my work experience, I saw two scenarios that gave me insight on what it takes to become a good dentist. So in the first scenario, there was a child that required an injection before a basic procedure. And even prior to the treatment, the child was restless and really anxious, quite a common theme with patients. And what I saw was that the dentist was really good at reassuring the patient, make sure that the element of surprise was gone, make sure that the patient knew exactly what was gonna happen at each stage, and even doing techniques such as make sure that the mother held the hand of the child. And what this taught me is by having a patient-centered approach, it's the best, it's, you get the best outcomes and it's the best way to become a successful dentist. And I observed a second scenario where an elderly patient was experiencing severe toothache. And prior to this treatment, the patient was in a lot of distress. However, after the dentist performed root canal treatment, the patient was overjoyed and the satisfaction I saw in the dentist's face was something that I want to replicate when I become a dentist. And I feel like the trust that the patient now has after the successful treatment is something that I feel that is a really positive aspect of dentistry and something that I want to achieve as a dentist as well. In conclusion, a successful treatment outcome boosts the trust between the patient and the dentist. Patients then go to the dentist as a place of relief and comfort. And this is something that I'd like to replicate in my own dental setting in the future as a dentist. So have you done any volunteering? So I volunteered in the care home whereby I helped residents with dementia. And the way I helped them was by talking to them about their lives, paying dominoes with them, and I could see the happiness on their face. They felt so loved from the attention I was giving towards them. And I felt a lot of compassion. And I thought compassion is a really important quality as a dentist, as it makes you provide the best treatment possible for your patient. And one of the patients actually was a dentist, and his name was Eric. And he traveled around the world, finding patients with, that were in deprived areas of dental treatment. 
and his impact on people is something that I want to replicate as a dentist and traveling worldwide is something I really want to do as I want to help patients that don't really get what we have here in the UK. So in conclusion, working in the care home made me realize how important compassion is as a dentist and it made me want to replicate a career as inspirational as Eric's. Okay, Sofiane, do you have any questions? No, but thank you so much for this opportunity. Pleasure. Was so intense. So if you somehow couldn't tell already, that was a mock interview. So the main thing you should focus on is content and delivery. And my answers were nowhere near perfect and they weren't scripted. So in your dental interviews, you can tailor the answers based on your goals and experiences. And be sure to follow me on Instagram and subscribe for more interview content and life from a KTL Dental Student. Like it's a great series. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!